two, one. Okay, so what are we looking at over here? This is a, how we scan Sifri Torah. Each column gets scanned as a separate image. Uh, as a separate image, okay. Right. Then it gets checked for textual errors. However, we can save the whole Sifri Torah in the database and use that afterwards to identify Sifri Torah and who the owner is. Okay, and has there ever been cases where Sifri Torah were stolen? And you were able to retrieve it this way. We were able to identify. To ide I mean, identify. We were able to identify stolen Torah. Yes, there was somebody that wanted to purchase Sefer Torah. He gave it into Vald Mishmer Stam to check. As soon as it went onto the computer, right away it caught that that Sefer Torah was flagged as stolen. Okay, and, and in a situation like that, you call the police right away, or the person bringing it to you did not know. Actually, then it wasn't over. The person that brought it to us did not know, and uh, the police were involved. Okay, and was there an arrest made in that case? I have to ask from Big Green Phil. He's here. Uh, okay. uh, yes. So, what are we looking at over here? We're reviewing these files mm -hmm. to see if any of the Sifri Torah that were in Carlsberg and Smedish were ever registered with Vlad Mishmeristan. Anything mm -hmm. that gets registered now is registered on the computer, and we're using the digital technology to be able to identify all the new Sfarim. However, we do still have folders of very many Sfarim that were registered only in the 1990 and they were never re-registered into the newer program. You see, we have from each servitor here mm -hmm. five columns from each okay. safer, from Reishis, from Shmoz, mm -hmm. from Ikram, and that's enough. Once uh, we put this in in the database, mm -hmm. you will have right away the owner, the name of the owner, the place, the synagogue, all the information. Okay. It uh, actually is in the database, however, however, uh, it's the things that were registered in the 1990s but weren't updated because either the people didn't re-register them after so many years, uh, a lot of that we still have to go through uh, paperwork. Okay. I would assume uh, the, the police department was in contact with you. You have police to get back to them. The police department, the detective, called us up and asked us if we have any information of the owners mm -hmm. of any of the Sifri Torah. We asked them to try to get us the code. Sometimes the owners have certain codes, and even though it's not registered, we might have the images in the database without the person's name just under the code, and we can match them together, and then we can register and it. So you're going to uh, match the computer code we with... We match the computer code with the owner information. If Even if it was not registered, we can register it retroactive. Okay, so the so there's good news. I mean, there's a good chance that uh, the chance is that, that if the Torah uh, swims up anywhere, if the person tries to sell it in any place in town, it will right away be identifiable worldwide. So what I'm looking at over here, this is the scanner that would uh, that scans the Sifri Torah, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So explain to me how this fingerprinting For works. Take a look. It's impossible. The same sofa will write ten Sifri Torahs. That that hay shall be underneath this, this sh the shin shall be underneath the hay. You know, that that combination, it's like the Shabbos luck. You have five numbers, and that's enough, you know, to protect you that, that uh, you shall not be able to go to, to, uh, to the house. And what here you have enough, you have 42 lines. 40, it's like 42 numbers, like a lack of 42 numbers. Mm -hmm. wow. A printed, a, a printed book will always be, it's the same, you know what I mean? But this, since it was written... You, since, it, yeah, since it was written by hand. By hand, hand it's, not, it's not exactly. possible that this letter should be underneath. And that's yeah. the key of he the whole... The uh, Torah, and he didn't want, want to sell it in the same continent as he stole it, so he took it to France. And when he brought it to the cipher over there, he wanted to sell it. They sent it uh, in an image to Vad Mishmeristam, which right away ran it through the database. And uh, automatically was picked up as a stolen Torah from the Chovat. Was stolen out of uh, the Chovat, yeah.